Nine. One night only, a man they call the cult, derivatives lecturer, the smartest of the cults, the finance industry's Mozart, the effervescent, the magical, Paul Wilmot. I'm sorry I'm late. I got distracted trying to save the world economy from financial meltdown. May I have a volunteer, please? Can you check that this is an ordinary deck of cards? And shuffle. And another volunteer. Thank you, madam. Please, would you be so kind as to name a card? Any card. Ace of spades. Would you hold up the cards, please? and fan them, so that I can't see them. Now a simple question for you all. What is the probability that this card I have in my hand is the aforementioned Ace of Spades? Anyone? One in 52. Because there are 52 cards in a deck? That makes sense. But aren't you missing something? It's 100%. You are supposed to be a magician, aren't you? <laughs> That's the general idea, yes. But suppose my question isn't about a card trick, suppose it's just a metaphor, if you will, for risk management and scenario analysis. What if you had a billion dollars riding on this card, and whether or not it's the ace of spades? Is it my money, or other people's? Good point. I hope he takes managing other people's money as seriously as he does his own. This question about the card trick is really about how you can think about scenarios and how important it is to look beyond the mathematics. Sometimes the impact of a scenario is quite easy to estimate. For example, if interest rates rise by 1%, then the bank's portfolio will fall in value by so many hundreds of millions. But estimating the probability of that interest rate rise in the first case might be quite tricky. And more complex scenarios might not even be considered. What about the effects of combining rising interest rates, rising mortgage defaults, and falling house prices? Hmm. Back to our magic trick. Are those the only two possible answers, either 1 in 52 or 100%? Suppose that you did indeed have billions of dollars of hedge fund money riding on the outcome of this magic trick. Would you feel so confident in your answers? Now, when I ask this question of finance people, I usually get the 1 in 52 answer or the 100%. Some will completely ignore the word magician, hence the first answer. Some will say, I'm supposed to give the maths answer, aren't I? But because he's a magician, he will certainly pick the ace of spades. This is usually accompanied by an aren't I clever smile. Rather frighteningly, some people trained in the higher mathematics of risk management still don't see the second answer, even after being told. Hmm. So this is really a question about whether modern risk managers are capable of thinking beyond maths and formulas. Do they appreciate the human side of finance, the hurting behavior of people, the unintended consequences? What I think of as all the fun stuff. And this is a nice question because it very quickly sorts out different types of thinkers. There is no correct answer to our magic problem. The exercise is to think of as many possibilities as you can. The answer one in 52 is almost the answer least likely to be correct. <laughs> Magicians rarely rely on probability. In the second edition of Frequently Asked Questions in Quantitative Finance, these are some of the issues I address. We don't just look at the mathematics, we also look at the human side. A lot of the time is spent discussing when and why the models, evaluation techniques, risk management, etc., why they go wrong. And this is almost more important than the models themselves. In this FAQ's book, we have sections on the history of quantitative finance, popular probability distributions in finance, the famous models and equations, all the Black Scholes formerly in the Greeks, some of the common contracts, very importantly, the commonest mistakes that quants make. Subtitled, a dozen basic lessons in common sense for quants and risk managers and the traders who rely on them. There are also 12 different ways to derive Black shoals. And of course, plenty of brain teasers for those of you who are looking for jobs.
How can we get quants and risk managers to think beyond the mathematics? Well, this is one of the purposes of my FAQs book. Let's carry on with the show and you'll see what I mean. One in 52, say some, or 100%, say others. Well, let's take a look, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, the card that I plucked from the deck is indeed the Ace of Sp The Three of Clubs. Oops, I guess I'll stick to the day job. Nevertheless, I, I hope this won't deter you from, from buying this excellent book. Not just a pretty face. Thank you.